Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the new PowerPoint 2013 and asking what's new and cool for PowerPoint users. There is a lot to like about the new PowerPoint 2013 and we're going to have a look at some of the features of it here in this video. The first thing is the start screen. This opens as soon as you open PowerPoint 2013 and there's a lot here for new users. You can actually turn the screen off but I think most people are going to opt to turn it on. The default is to start with a new presentation with the default theme but you can see here that we've got recent files that we've opened in PowerPoint so they're all available to us. We could go online and search for templates and themes online and there's some suggested searches here. We can also click here to open other presentations that we might have stored on SkyDrive or on our local computer or even SharePoint. And up here is the current account so when you open PowerPoint 2013 or any of the new Office 2013 applications you're going to be logged into your SkyDrive account and this is access to it and here we could switch accounts if we wanted to. These are just for um, testers so I think that they're probably going to go in the final production. But let's have a look and see what would happen if we selected one of these templates. So I'm just going to click this one to open it. And you can see here that there's some variants in this theme. We're having a look right now at the more images so we can see what this layout is going to look like if we select this particular one. And there's this title layout and this is what the chart would look like. And then smart art graphics and this is a photo layout. And then there are different variants, different color combinations that we could use in this particular theme. Now what they've done in PowerPoint 2013 is that they've removed some of the color options that we've had previously and sort of scaled them down to a more manageable group. So this particular design has four color options and you choose one of them and go with it rather than having to select from a set of color schemes that are probably 20 or 30 of them. So I'm really liking this sort of ready one so let's click create. And we're now all ready to start our PowerPoint presentation. None of this is going to be unusual for PowerPoint users. A little bit has changed with the interface here. You can see that it's got a metro style look to it. So everything's a lot flatter. There's no dimension in the screen, no shading. The buttons are sort of all gone to the back and really what we're doing is focusing a little bit more on the content of our presentation. Let's go to Backstage View before we come back here though and see what's there. I'll click File to go to Backstage View. Now some of these options have changed. There's Save and Save As. If we go to Save As you'll see that by default we're now saving to SkyDrive. So this is the SkyDrive account that I was already logged into. Details are up here and it's opting to save it to SkyDrive by default. If I want to, I can save it to my own computer. So I can click computer and this gives me access to my own folder structure. I can also add a place. So I could add things like a SharePoint location or a different SkyDrive account. Print is pretty standard. There's not much changes here, but Share has some options. You can invite people to share your document on your SkyDrive account. You can email it. You can present it online or publish your slides here. Export. Here we've got our PDF XPS document support. Here's the video option. Here's packaging it for a CD, creating handouts and changing our file type. Down here are the standard options. This is general options for working inside PowerPoint. And there's not much changed here. Let's go back here, however, to this account area and this is where you manage your accounts. So at the moment you can see that I've got a connected service with my Facebook account, my SkyDrive account, Twitter. I can also add LinkedIn if I wanted to. I could add Flickr. There's the ability to add SharePoint or another SkyDrive account. Lots of options here and I imagine that over time we might see even more appearing here. This is also showing me where I am with my product. I can get updates and get an information about whether the updates are installed, whether there are any, and it's just telling me which version of Microsoft PowerPoint I'm using. So there's our backstage view, there's our start screen. So let's go back now and have a look and see what's different inside the PowerPoint interface itself. 
The ribbon is pretty standard from the older versions of the ribbon. The difference is that the design tab is split in two now with the themes and the variants. So here we have the various themes that we can use. We're using this one here, but you can see that we're using this variant of it. This is another one of the built-in themes for PowerPoint 2013. And here are the variants, so we could make it blue or pink, whatever we want to do here. The Developer tab is now visible by default, so that's a big change for people who want access to macros. I've got some additional things open here and it's picked up my old Handy Tools tab, which is one that I added to my PowerPoint 2010 and it's been brought forward into 2011, so too has Visual B. But these are things that I've added in myself, they're not actually in the default PowerPoint install. There is a new button here on the toolbar. It's the touch mode button and you can enable it if you're on a touch screen. With that enabled, if I just tap it, what happens is that the buttons become a little bit further apart and everything's a little bit bigger for work on a touch screen. Click it again and everything shrinks down just a little bit. Let's have a look at adding a chart. So I'm just going to go back to the home screen and we'll do a new slide with a chart. So I'm going to choose a title and content slide and let's just add a chart to our presentation and close this down. These settings here are new and these are in Excel as well. So these give you the ability to add chart elements or remove them. For example, if we don't want a legend, we could just disable the legend here. We could also, for example, disable the chart title if we plan to add the chart title in as the slide title. There's access here to styles and color options. You can see that we could change the colors, but we've got a smaller subset of colors this time and they're more true to the theme itself. So we've been given smaller numbers of options, but probably more relevant options if you could think of it that way. And then here we've got other settings. We can change the values and the names. So there's options here for working with our chart. Let's go again and let's add another new slide. This time I want to add an image. So I get a choice of selecting pictures from my own computer or online pictures. Online Pictures allows me to select images from office.com clip art. I can search for them using Bing or I could go and get them from my SkyDrive account. It's also possible for me to get them from my Flickr account. So let's just go and get an image right now. Let's go and get a coffee image. Okay, let's grab this one here and I'm going to insert it. So I'm just clicking it and tap insert. And now we've got our image inserted on our slide. Now if we wanted to make changes to this image, we would typically go to the Picture Tools Format tab. But watch what happens when I right click the image here and choose Format Picture. What we get is this new format picture pane here. It's a task pane and in it are all the things that we can use to format our pictures. So let's go ahead and let's add a reflection to this picture. Just add a very simple reflection to it. Okay, let's go now and add another slide and this time I'm going to add a smart art graphic. So let's just add a default smart art graphic. But look what's happened to our pane. Now we're seeing format shape options because these are the options that we can use with this smart art graphic. If we go back to this slide here and click on the picture, the pane is still there. It stays in place if we want it to, but it changes to show us the kind of options that we have for the object that we're working with. And I think users are going to really like this because you don't have dialogue sitting over the top of your slides. This is all tucked away on the side and you can leave it open as you work and it's just giving you much quicker access to things. You can see we haven't moved away from the Home tab and yet we've got most of the smart art tools available that allow us to format this smart art as we work. Now another handy tool we've got is the eyedropper tool. So I'm just going back to this image and I am going to click on the image and go to Picture Tools Format tab and I'm going to select Picture Border. So instead of actually choosing one of these theme colors, what I can do is use the new eyedropper tool. 
What the eyedropper tool does is to allow me to select a color from the image itself. So I can just mouse over an area of the image and select that as the color of my picture border, for example. So it's now my selected color, so I can now add a border to the image that is a color that I've selected from the image itself. Now, you may be missing the color options that you used to have inside PowerPoint, but we still have access to them. We just have access to them in a limited way. So let's say that we like this general layout, but we'd really like it to be a different color combination. In this case, we'll go to the View option and we'll go to Slide Master View. In Slide Master View, we can control the Slide Master that controls the look and feel of our presentation. And you can see here that the old theme color options are back again. So for example, if we wanted to use a theme color, for example, median, we could do that. And here's our median color scheme that's now been applied to the presentation. I'll close Master View and let's go back into the Design View. We've still got the four options that came with this slide presentation, but we also have our own custom option. That's a slide master that we can use. Now, if we like this color scheme in preference to the other variants, we can save it as we always could. Just drop down this theme option and save the current theme. So you do get the customization options of being able to change colors, but you get it where they really should have been all along, which is in the slide master, because you really want it to be thematically strong and you want this color scheme to be applied throughout the entire presentation. Now some of the other options that are available inside PowerPoint 2013 is the video option. So you can select online video or video on your PC. There are a few more options in working with video content. You'll find things in the slideshow menu when you go to rehearse a slideshow or set up a slideshow. You'll have different options in terms of viewing presenter views. So you can actually see presenter view if you want to. So let's just do that and let's send the slideshow to the monitor and the primary monitor, which is not the one I'm using right now. And let's do presenter view and let's just view the slideshow. So here's our presenter view. You can see that we can see which slide we're on and we can navigate through the slides. In fact, this is my title slide and this is the next one up and there's two and three. We can also use a see all slides option where you can see the slides themselves. You can press escape here and you're just going back into presenter view, not ruining the presentation, which is actually running on my second monitor right now. You've got the ability to zoom into the slideshow, so you can click on here and zoom it up full screen. And there are the standard laser pointers, so you can use a laser pointer on your screen and you can see other slideshow options here. So there's plenty to like about this new PowerPoint 2013. I think you'll like it a lot. If you haven't already done so, why not go and download the customer preview and install it and have a play around with it. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this presentation. You can find more of my videos here on my YouTube channel. I encourage you to subscribe to the video channel as we're releasing at least two new videos every week. And also follow me at projectwoman.com where you'll find tips and tricks for all the office applications as well as much, much more. If you like this video, please go ahead and like it and I'm always happy to hear your comments.